I know that Plague doesn't expose, but she does one shot anyway, so technically it's exposed. So she's worse than Plague at that, and she's worse than Artist in Night when it comes to cutting off a loop. It's like, okay, I just dropped the drone here. Uh, obviously the survivor's gonna move. That's if they need to move um, before they get exposed. And then they just run away and you get an M1 if they, and if they get injured. Well, you're practically just an M1 killer. There's no point if they're exposed if they're already injured. Only thing she's really good at is like finding people, which that is pretty useful, but then again, most of the time you can always find people. So, is it like she's basically an M1 killer with like a little power similar to the knight or something I say like uh, like the way I say like the knight and artist is because if you are in a chase and you can trap a survivor in a corner you can just drop the drone and they don't want to stay near the drone a lot because if they do they get exposed so they typically would just run to another loop that's kind of like how you play against knight and artist kind of but like, but what I'm saying is like at that point, and that's and it takes a lot longer than Knight and Artist, for one thing. So she's already weaker. But like, let's say they're already injured. Like, if if a survivor is already injured, regardless, her power literally means nothing. It's only to help you find people. <laughs> and then again, it's still fairly hard to actually get a survivor to be exposed. She's actually pretty good in three gens though. Three gens, she is pretty good because she can just keep drones around there. But other than that, most of her power is kind of like redundant. Plus, I mean, just actual game sense too. You can know where they're at. It's like, hey, I injured this person. I, okay, I injured this person. There's a gen over here. Okay, it's like they have the claw trap on, but I know they're over there anyway, so why do I even need to check my tracker? But you see you see how it just kind of becomes redundant? There's no point. You know where they're at. It's just giving you info you already have. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. She is fun though. I, I do like playing her, even though like I literally can't get a 4k. I just like the fact that, yeah, I just... I'm, I feel like most of the time I'm just an M1 killer. And and also, to be fair, I also do feel like, uh... I mean, it's... I She just came out today. I can't say even know how to play her properly. But she literally just feels like an M1 killer that gives you information. She does look cool, kind of, for being a Walmart predator. <laughs> but isn't that how, like, when new killers come out, isn't it kind of like, uh, they always have to tweak them a bunch? Yeah, but typically, I mean, they're probably not even going to tweak her anymore because from what they've claimed, they gave them a bunch of buffs already, but the buffs don't feel like they did, did anything. So, were you playing against her too, though? Yeah, playing against her, it's not even too bad. You basically just leave the drone area? I mean, yeah. Or just deactivate it. And it's like... It's like, okay, she... It's like, so you hack the drone, and it's on you, right? But it's like... And she knows where to find you. You... If you're still set in a strong... Like, strong looping area with pallets... It's like, okay, just let her come loot me. 
or just let me like let her just just let her come chase me so aside from just her knowing where you are you're just basically an m1 killer pretty much <laughs> literally she, she really does and, and it's kind of hard to work for the exposed status effect the thing with plague is it it kind of just comes with ease just infect the gen with it or infect someone you know that's so plague tip yes plague like pretty much is an m1 killer but you have two gold you have two apples to give her power which her power is insanely broken what are the apples they give her extra fountains so she already starts with one corrupted and if you give her two apples she can get her power three times the only thing that you have the downfall of the plague is to just is the rng placements also the what i've been doing as survivor which i do love is um <laughs> is abusing any means necessary Basically, you can literally punish any killer for not breaking a pallet right away. Because any means necessary doesn't have a cooldown anymore. It doesn't? You could just pick up as many pallets yeah. as you want? <laughs> yeah. It's so, it sounds so ah. stupid. So, like, I, I'm playing... I'm playing the Skull Merchant right now in this, uh, an RPD. You're the killer she, or she against? Can, you're going yeah, against. The killer. She can hold a gen, uh, place pretty well. Or at least it feels like when the gens are kind of, like, close. But isn't RPD two totally different maps depending on which wing you get? Yeah, but for the most part, there's always going to be like a gen. There's like almost two confirmed gen spawns. There's one always right by the front office desk. There's always going to be like one like at the top of main. Top of like main where that uh, lion statue is. I know with when I play nurse on RBD, depending on which wing I get, sometimes I I can almost always win with a three gen, or yeah. I'll always lose if it's the other wing. The west side is the side that's better for survivors. The right side is the side that's not better. Or no, yeah, the east side is the better side for a killer. east side means that the west side is like closed off more yeah playing this bubba right now so one thing that's also pr actually eh. well i i feel what would have been also better if a survivor is exposed you can track them I feel like that would have been way better too. It's also like in a way you kind of just have to break literally all the pallets for survivors. Hopefully they just don't get have any more but since there's just so many pallets. I barely got her. Yeah, some maps <laughs> have just so many pallets, it's ridiculous. It really is. It's like, for being a strict M1 killer, too. That's the only way for her to down people, just M1. I mean, but to also be fair, though, I technically am just using three perks. Because I like using Shadowborn. <laughs> I just feel Shadowborn helps me in like in chases more because like well if I can just see more around they can't like mind game as much if, or what it feels like 
while looping? Yeah. You actually do see better, like more around the I loops. S I see way better. Like if I, s like if the survivor's like kind of camping behind uh, like a wall or something, I can see them more because like my field of view is stretched. So like I feel like for them it's actually harder to mind game me, just because I have that information, you know. <laughs> But sometimes, actually, on certain loops, though, like dropping the, uh, like dropping the drone down can be pretty good, just because it forces, like, if they are injured, I guess. Um, what the fuck? Oh, what the? F I just made this swift up for rage quit because I'm camping near a, I'm camping near a hook in a 99% gen with overcharge. <laughs> What a way to just end that match. That's such a clip. Yeah, so I think another good uh, thing is because like you're gonna kind of have to like, defend gens and there's no more eruption. I will be running overcharge on her most of the time. We'll be running what? Overcharge. Overcharge? Yeah, it's very good camping gen perk. Because of the regression or the skill check? The regression. Do you there's, use there's it no with Call of Brian? Anymore. Eh, I like Call of Brian, but personally, I know Call of Brian is better, but personally, I've liked the overcharge more. This one's hiding in a locker. I mean, I can't believe I just made this group of four rage to it. They had four unbreakables off the record deliverance. It's just RPG or RPD. <laughs> You're playing Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> With no head, too. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, I had a, a challenge to vault uh, like eight times with bamboozle, so I'm like, okay. But I feel like. <laughs> I feel like the only way to play Bubba is really to camp and tunnel. Well, yeah, that's really the only way to play them because if the survivors are like actually good, it's harder to get like a chainsaw than you think. I mean, like it can be fairly easy to loot Bubba, just because like, okay, we well, just go to one loop and just go to the next because he's gonna have to break the pallet because if he doesn't, he's just someone killer. I mean, some Bubbas are actually very skilled though, but yeah. I mean, with the power like his, you do want to take advantage of tunneling and camping. Everybody's like, um, oh, Bubba, all he does is camp. But if you really think about it, that's that's his power with a chainsaw. And, and I'm like, if you really think about it, it's also not just Bubba. Every killer, if they're playing the win, will camp. So it's not like, hey, don't just get mad at this killer playing Bubba. It's literally every killer. <laughs> but do you think, like, what is the main difference between face camping or proxy camping? Um, I mean, either way, camping is camping. They're the same thing. But is it... Proxy camping is, like... It, like, you are camping, but, like, you have enough, like, space to kind of zone out survivors more. And not just let them get into the hook. When you face camp, um, yeah, you're right at the hook, but it's like, if anything, face camping is technically worse for the killer because survivors can just, depending on the killer, but survivors can just rush in and just get the unhook. 
But like if you proxy camp, it's like, okay, let's say I run away from the hook a little bit, but I'm still there. And I know two survivors are all the way like this other gen. So I'm camping, but I run out and I see the survivor going for the unhook. I hit them, but I have eight stacks of save the best for last. It's like, okay, I hit them and they're still sprinting to the hook, but I already get them because my cooldown on save the best for last is done. That's the benefit of like, that's just a scenario where like, benef where you would benefit from uh, proxy camping. So would save the best be good on Bubba? No. Uh, save the best would not be good on Bubba because you don't want to take advantage of M1s when you have an insta down power. You will only you, you really only M1 with Bubba when you get the opportunity to M1 with him. Other than that, you'll just uh, like okay, it's like oh they're gonna make the vault, but I don't make my chainsaw. I'll just get an M1 hit on them just so they're injured, and I'll go defend this gen over to this next loop and harass some other survivors. It's stuff like that. What do you think would be the best build on Bubba though? Um, uh, best build on Bubba. Let's see. Uh. Well, so what people do like to do with Bubba, because hook placement is so important with them. Agitation, Iron Grasp. Yeah, you, you definitely want to run Agitation. You don't need Iron Grasp though. But. Uh. Might as well have pain. Obviously res. corrupt. You do want corrupt and Bubba. Why is that? Corrupt is on any killer. Even nurse. Yeah, even even nurse. And that's all just to get a, a faster, like just to get a first down without losing so much gen progress. Right. So when at you at least you'll know if survivors are working on gens, which they most likely 100% of the time are, if they're actually quick on the gens, you'll know what gens potentially have that progress, so you can do the process of elimination. It kind of helps you with that early game. So if you run corrupt, do you immediately go to those gens that are um, like not blocked? Um. You immediately go where you think survivors will spawn. So, so typically, typically just from the RNG, survivors will kind of just be around there. But sometimes there'll be like a survivor that like will spawn near you, or occasionally not like exactly near you, but just near you. So like it really, it really just depends. But if you use corrupt, you, you're being forced to actually play around those gens that are not blocked, basically. Right? I mean, so you don't necessarily have to play around them. Because, and, and again, this is also, it just depends on circumstances with RNG. Like, what if it blocks, like, really important gens and you don't really need to worry about those gens? You don't need to play around them that much because they're not as important if you lose them. But isn't that where the survivors are going to be, though, if those are the only gens that aren't blocked? I mean, yeah, but like if you're in a chase with someone else, um, like again, like sometimes you don't necessarily even need to worry about them. Plus, I mean, it could also, just having Corrupt, it gives you the freedom to just get injuries. It's like, if you feel that this person is like wasting a lot of your time looping, but you still somehow manage to get an injury on them, it's like, okay, well, they're looping me near Corrupted Gems, so I don't need to worry about them, but I know they're injured for later. So they're not going to be pushing over to the Gems that aren't Corrupted, so you can just injure them, just go back over to the Gems, and you still have pressure. So is the first thing one of the first things you do is identify where your best like gens are to defend and you stay and you kind of like keep to that side of the map. 
Like on this one, yes. like on this on this game, I just played with Bubba. I, I got two Moris and two escaped. But the the map was split where there was like a three gen on one side and a three gen all the way on the other side. So how do I decide which one I want to hold? Like one of them also had, I think one of them had the gates near them, shack, and it was like a three gen. And then the whole other side of the map had a three gen. So how do you decide what's the best area to to try to hold? Um, well, sometimes if you feel like it can be 50-50, and sometimes you're deciding what gens to defend will even, like, uh, it will change throughout. Because, like, hey, if this gen gets done, well, okay, I'll probably go to another area where gens are more compacted. And... Uh, well, this this is in the scenario of playing Bubba. So, if you even really just hook Bubba near, or hook get a survivor hook near, like any two gens that are compacted, you'll know by the time when there's one gen left, even those gens will just they will be priority. But you have a hook there, and with Bubba, you can just camp the hook and camp at least one of the gens, and you know that the gens won't. So hook gens won't be done. hook placement is important yeah. with every killer. Meaning you want to hook them by a cluster of gens? Yes, that way you can camp and tunnel if you just need to, all while having gens near you. So I I could have I could have recorded it, but pretty much, um, so I was playing Skull Merchant, right? And I was on RPD. I I pretty much just blocked the stairway of this. Uh, yeah, I pretty much blocked the stairway to the with the god palette and uh, uh lion statue is and i had a drone on the other side but that gen was 99 and i had overcharge and i had the hate right next to me on hook i intentionally hooked her near that gen on purpose to force them into that into the drone to potentially get exposed i could chase and just down them and they can't just just finish the gen right in front of me without getting the unhook because the unhook and the gen are like side by side so i purposely hooked that survivor next to that 99 gen also because like when there's a gen 99 survivors are just they're gonna do whatever they can to try to finish it yeah they pop it right in my face yeah mm -hmm. so yeah hook placement will also change the priority of kind of what gens you want to defend because sometimes even just confirming a kill is better than saving them. so agitation the main usage of that like the main purpose for it is to be able to get to a particular hook but yeah yeah you always you don't you never just want to hook a survivor on a random hook that's not making use of your own positioning and your own hooks i, I see like a, i see like in tournaments artist players use it Trickster players, Huntress players, Bubba players, and Hillbilly players use it. And they're all using Corrupt too? All, yep, they all use Corrupt too. So what about the other two perks? What should they be? For Bubba? Well, for killers in general, but I guess in this case for yeah, Bubba. Because, in this case for Bubba, me personally, I'm running Bamboozle. Because cutting off a loop, using your chainsaw right after you'll get a down or even just force a pallet break mm -hmm. uh if you feel and you and you can also it just it's also your preference too if you just want to run more gen defense too that's also better that way what if you do decide to camp or proxy camp like that instead of just committing to every single survivor you chase um you can actually camp better because you have more gen defense well gen defense so to help you with uh gen defense with, uh, chase chase yeah but gen defense as in like overcharge deadlock pain, pain resonance like what would be the best one deadlock is is definitely one of the best perks for camping because it's just a guaranteed extra two minutes yeah because mm -hmm. i was it, thinking something like seconds on a gen <laughs> yeah and so if there are four gens that pop you're gonna get two minutes extra of game of like that's, it extends the game two insane. minutes yep that is insane deadlock is my favorite gen defense perk 
So I would think for camping, the the best perks would be something like corrupt, just for the beginning for the early game, and then deadlock to buy you the extra two minutes, and then no way out to give you an extra minute at the end. Oh yeah, actually that that's actually a very good point because uh, I used I used no way out corrupt and I used no way out corrupt overcharge and deadlock for a lot of my tournament matches on trickster Be it, it trust me what you like it really helps when getting that early hook and camping if you need to but then again that's like you can also in a way be more lenient just in public matches because they're very different from combat just... yeah i played against the comp team the other day for like an it's hour very different, right? i was lucky to get one kill trust me i i say the same thing i'm lucky to have even gotten a hit on anyone <laughs> but so if it was between like so the options like let's say in the case of bubba you have corrupt agitation bamboozle deadlock or no way out so how do i know like what's the best combo Like, would you go with a Noed, No Way Out? Oh, yeah. Noed, No Way Out is a very, very strong combo. So what about Corrupt, Deadlock, No Way Out, and Noed? So, one thing... Uh, one thing I do like to have personally in a build sometimes... I mean, and it all just depends. You can obviously switch it up and everything. But sometimes, depending on just how games go, I'll make an adjustment. And somewhere in the build, I always want to run like a regressing gen perk. Just because, you know, if you regress gens in a way, instead of just locking them, you know survivors are just going to have to work on them longer. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's why, like, that's pain why, res? Like, eruption, that's why eruption was so good, because... Not only did it take away 10% off a of gen, but it also blew it up and, well, you can't do anything and it's regressing as opposed to it just staying there and then you not even being able to work on it. Do you think it should have been nerfed because everybody was crying about it? Absolutely not. It, there's, there's insane, there's easy counterplay to it. People just, survivors were just so tired of Oh yeah, it's solo queue. I'm like, dude, it's not even that bad. Like if you're paying attention, or even just get off and wait a couple seconds. Like literally just wait a couple seconds. It's not that bad. So because, because then again it's like okay, a killer damages a gen. Uh killer damages a gen. They're in a chest with the survivor, but if the survivor is like kind of real, if every four, if all four survivors are really hard to get, it can still even be hard to to get a down before the gen is done, so you can even get eruption value. And that can even apply to solo queue. Solo queue people say that simply because like typically the people that play solo queue are kind of trash, so it's like it, it's not even them complaining about really eruption they just they just get down so fast that's why there's so much eruption value if you don't go down eruption can't get value the thing i don't like about corrupt is that it's a perk that like it's only active in the beginning and then it goes away and then also like if you down someone it just goes away so it almost feels like that I'm just left with an empty perk slot that I could have been using something that I get more value from like pain res repeatedly. So, so the thing is you're, you're not wrong, but look at it like this. Most of the time, if you're playing against extremely good survivors, you're not getting that much value from any of your perks. Like I'll take pain res, for example, if it's really hard to even get a hook, and you're not getting hooks, you're not getting pain res value, so it's literally just the perk sitting there. 
Yeah, especially sometimes it's hard to get to the pain res hook. Yeah, yeah, even considering that. Um. But then you look at someone like Super Alpha, and he got his 560 something win streak by by using pain res and agitation, basically, and swears by it. I mean, that's that's clearly av agitation value, and him also playing the best killer. So, typically, when we look at builds. We kind of want to leave out Blight and Nurse because they're just, they're way better. They're way better. You you have the freedom to kind of just run with literally whatever you want. What about Spirit? Yeah, it's Spirit too, but not necessarily as much. It kind of, you just have to have the good add-on combos. But yeah, Spirit, she's definitely third best. Which is the mother-daughter ring and what else? The mother-daughter ring and, uh that purple add-on to increase duration by 70% and reduce speed by 17. That combo is, it's, it's... Wait, which one is down. it? Increases a haunting duration by 70%, yeah. decreases movement speed by 15%. So one of them is making you faster, but then it's making you slower? Yeah, but the, the mother-daughter ring will completely overshadow that speed boost or that minus speed percentage that's 40 percent increased movement speed and then the other one is taking off 15 percent you know think it'd be better to just run the the rusty flute that has increased haunting recharge rate so you just use it more um well, sometimes it's not just a matter of using it more, but... Because you only need to use the power as long as you are, like, downing people in chase. So it's like... It, if if you're really good enough, you only need to use your power once in that in that chase. I mean, you can, definitely, if you're not running that combo, though... I mean... Okay, wait. So let's not use the mother-daughter ring, because you're not going to want to run that every time. Why not? Um, I mean, that, that's if you just feel like using the most broken add-on combo every time. But like, if you're not, you can run recharge rate. So I'll I'll run like recharge rate with a speed add-on. What's another yeah. speed add-on? Uh. The hat, the, the movement, movement speed, speed by yeah, ten percent. Yeah. Or you could even do like charge rate, uh, like speed charge rate. Uh, go to the right, or go to the other add-ons. Which ones? Um, I think it's the yellow ones. It's to the left of the hat on your stream. Increase haunting duration twenty percent. Increase passive phasing frequency. Passive phasing duration. Increase the recharge rate by 15% as the watch. I'm pretty sure there's an add on that increases charge the speed. Charge speed. Yeah. Increase one. haunting charge speed. You could even do charge speed and recharge rate. It's just, there's many other options if you're not using Mother Daughter Ring. Well, what about the perks? So you don't think that oh. the Mother Daughter Ring should go with the recharge rate? Nah, if you're using Mother Daughter Ring, you're always gonna run the Haunting Duration. That, that's just as simple as that. <laughs> Why? You just want to be invisible longer? Well, you're also... you're invisible longer. Uh, well, let's not say invisible, but you're phasing longer while still being faster. And that's more for chase, or is it more for getting from one side of the map to the other? both so and what are the both. what would be the best uh, perks um, right here I got sloppy good. pain res jolt and call of Brian sloppy's very good because she's and win killer only um, you could run jolt if you're downing people efficiently which spirit is good at so jolt can be valuable um could you corrupt 
Uh, no eruption. You could do pain res. You know, just your gen, your typical perks you run in spirit. She can be flexible with them. You could even but, run save the best for last. And just don't hit your obsession. Uh, I mean, it all just depends on scenarios and how you save the best for last. Would you use agitation? People use agitation in spirit because it's hook placement. And even if you get like a basement, you're really solid. So you, so you actually, uh, well, I mean, that's a year ago. I, li I just put in, um, actually, so they actually just had a DVD league not too long ago. Uh, try even seeing the video if you just want to browse what Kurt, what perks these killers are using. I just sent it to you. These, these are like two of the best teams in the world. Obviously, they make it here every time. I'm just trying to think of what's the most practical or specific killers. Like with Spirit, Sloppy is good because you want to keep them injured. Yeah. So with Spirit, if if Spirit is um uh so Spirit. The, I mean, just in general, but like it works better for spirit because since it's easier to track a survivor when they're injured, you want to keep them injured. That way, sloppy, you know, will help you with that because healing takes longer. And if, even if you interrupt the healing, it's even just better. And if you know that survivors are going to spend a lot of time healing, that's a lot of times they're not spending on gens. But if you have, let's say you have a uh, deadlock, right? Does that work with Jolt or Pain Res? Or if the gen is locked up, Pain Res and so, Jolt isn't going to blow it? So I know Jolt does... I mean, I know Pain Res doesn't work with Deadlock. I think Jolt works with Deadlock. So if I have Corrupt and Sloppy, what would be two best perks to, for, like, gen regression? Because uh, should I avoid... Oh, Brian, overcharge? Should I so then gen kicking is okay? Yeah, oh it's spirit. Gen kicking is hundred percent okay. Why? Because of her mobility? Yeah, mobility just pressure she can apply. She's the third best killer in the game. She's what? The third best killer in the game. So call Brian end overcharge? Um Personally, that combo might not be as good anymore because eruptions nerfed. I mean, you can still do it. No, I mean you can because it'll make the gen things even better. Why is call? Why is uh, overcharge better than uh, call of brain? It's not better. I like it better because. I just like the fact that, uh, I just know at some point the gen will always keep going. Cause if I, if, and it happened, and it's obviously just like chance, but if I kick a gen and I chase a survivor, um, I know that gen will keep forever aggressing until it's touched, even though it won't be as fast. But if no one does touch that gen, that gen will just hit zero. But with Call of Brian, it only lasts for 60 seconds, which don't get me wrong is actually insane because it's 60 seconds for 200% regression. But there's a video of like people testing. Well, if you just leave a gen like going, overcharge will deplete the whole gen faster. Yeah, but with my experience, when I kick a gen, good survivors always come up and touch it like very quickly. They don't let it regress. See now, now that's why that's why Call of Brian is better. No one will ever use overcharge. All tournament play, it's it's gonna be Call of Brian. But I almost feel like good players will counter Call of Brian because they'll just tap the gen so quickly. It's almost like it didn't do anything. Well, 
that way at least with Call of Brian you'll know where they're at. Or if someone touched it. Overcharge you won't. I I always like the perks that made the gens explode. Like when eruption was good, I would like to stack that with with jolt, eruption, pain res, and just keep watching the gens explode. But now that's not really a thing. Eruption's, yeah, eruption's dead. So Paco, some something I do in solo queue if I know killer has eruption and oh, I can't even read that. Something I do in solo queue if I know the killer has eruption and someone is getting chased, I will get off the gen for a few, get back on and do the same thing. Well, it doesn't matter anymore because it doesn't have that effect anymore. Somewhat mobility can, because at least gets speed boost. To gen and other stuff. Got a question about one of your COD4 videos on HVARX. What, what's your question? But then, yeah, uh, then you get information. This call Brian gives you a loud no noise notification if they had a, a good skill check, but sometimes they don't even get a skill check. Like if the gen's like 90, you know, percent done and they just get on it, they might not even get a skill check and just finish the gen. What about nowhere to hide? I see a lot of people running that. Um, yeah, very solid perk, in my opinion. Even though I I never use it, because sometimes like uh, it's a matter of okay, I kick a gen that's in a corner. Uh, if I uh, I kick a gen that's in a corner or just anywhere, but I can't find a survivor that's around them. Like I literally can't, and I just leave it. It's like, okay, well, the survivor's just gonna touch that gen instantly. But at least if you kick the gen and you see them, you can know you can just chase them and commit. That's like the true value of, uh. Nowhere to hide, yeah. Yeah, that's the true value of it. So kick a gen and know where the survivor's at instead of wasting time not even finding them and then you're just forced to leave to go somewhere else. That that's definitely why people use no enough or the night perk. <clears throat> I feel like whenever I play without gen regression, it's uh the gens go way too fast. I almost feel like four slowdown is necessary. Or at least two or three. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. I like running four slowdown. I guess sloppy's considered a slowdown, right? Yeah, slop yeah, sloppy is slowdown. Just like uh, No Way Out is also slow down. Slow down, for it to be considered a slow down perk, it doesn't have to just be applied to gens. But typically, like, slow down perk, when you mention a slow down perk, it's referred to gens because, well, the only things that survivors can do to, like, really win is gens, and they do go by quick. I have nothing on this for endgame build. That's fine, you're, you're kind of spirit. She doesn't really chase perks, like... Doesn't really need, like, spirit fury, enduring, any of that stuff. Nope. Doesn't even really need aura reading, right? I mean, you can run aura reading on any killer. I'm wondering what would be better here, pain res. Because if, if I have pain res, then it takes away gen kicking altogether. Yeah, so that's actually one of the things I do like about pain res. Like, 
let's say you get like two painter's hooks. That's like 30% you took off like any gen. Without actually, without even having to kick it. Yeah, without even having to kick it. But what's oh, best is when you can recycle the same scourge hook over and over. Mm -hmm. Like that's when you mm -hmm. get the most value out of it. You just keep like someone goes for the unhook, you down the next person, you throw them right on that same scourge hook, it just keeps blowing up. Yep. Or just getting painters after painters after painters, yeah. So, did you look at that video I sent you? Like, no, you don't not have to watch yet. It, but just, just like skim through each of like the killer timestamps and just look at the perks they're using. You're always gonna see corrupts. Always, 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 always. I can't even, like honestly, I can't even tell you a killer game I've gone without using corrupt. Even if it's like what you said, I get it down super quick and I just don't get the perk is over. So always, always, always use corrupt. For me, like if I get it down really fast, I don't necessarily know how to snowball that into more downs because I feel like if I camp the hook or camp around the hook, the rest of the survivors just crank out gens. And by the time that person even goes to stage two or they come in, they save them right before they go to stage two. So I still don't even get the stage two hook out of it. So they, they really use the time to crank out gens. But if I leave the hook to go to chase someone, they just get a free unhook and that person gets healed up. So I don't know how to Again. snowball it into more downs and hooks. It really now with that it also kind of depends on the killer. Um, if you're like Bubba, uh, obviously you just camp, and and really it just it just comes down to being like efficient in chases. If you hook them right away and you don't want to camp, just yeah they're gonna get the unhook, but just stand the other person really quickly, fast as you can. Um, but what if you don't see anyone around? You hook them. <clears throat> there's no one around and like like let's say they ran you towards a corner of the map but the uh, the gens are really on the other side of the map and now you just you down them and you throw them on a hook but if you camp that hook the gens are on the other side of the map and yeah so sometimes what you'll do is you'll just want to leave them and um which actually can just be beneficial straight up to leave them leave them slugged like, or leave the chase um we'll leave the hook like you have them hooked, but you said not r really near any gens, right? Yeah. So if they're hooked, not really near any gens, the way you kind of think about it, you go to the gens and you just happen to find someone, you have information now. So you know someone's going to be going to the hook. So that's one person and the person is on the hook. So okay, so you know that's two people. And if if you are in a chase with someone, you're chasing that person so they're not a gen so um if the fourth person's actually doing something they'll be on the gen so that's also kind of the value for getting corrupt at the start because like you hook them so far away from the gens you're going over to them it, it, that's and that's kind of like snowball pressure so now you just kind of have uh a hook on someone that you can later tunnel if you find them and you're in a chase of another person that if you're already down, well, you kind of have two hooks already. At the expense of, like, in theory, not having too much pressure on gens because of that corrupt value. Do you think corrupt is a must always on every killer? Yeah, look at the, look at the, um, um, the video. Those so are both the number one and number two teams in the world like what's the one you, the what's that one team i think you said you went against eternal. eternal is yeah, that the one with uh, nightlight yeah it is the one with nightlight so i was watching nightlight stream and he was playing nurse and he was running no perks and no add-ons and somebody actually asked him in the chat like why do you run no perks and no add-ons he's like why do i need to like <laughs> I guess he's just better <laughs> that's why it's he's when, just when that he, insanely good that you don't need anything at all i mean in a public match yeah but what about in a public match when you go up against a really good swift that is like that actually plays comp 
I mean, it still won't even mean anything to him if he does lose because it's a pub match. Well, he said that he hasn't lost a match in like the past year. Like, he's like, I don't lose ever. <laughs> and he's running I, nothing. I, that, so that is just another thing that's, that's just because he is better. I mean, if you, I don't know if you've ever been on his Steam profile, but it's just endless tournaments won with the money prize next to him. Like, the biggest of Dead by Daylight tournaments. I but I don't see like I don't I want to watch those competitions. I've only seen like he posts some and some of the quality is really bad. But I watched one and it was really just he got one hook and basically camped it to and turned <laughs> that into like a four K. Yeah. yeah, that that's why comp is like it's really kind of boring because. Uh, you you have to camp the first person you hook they have to be dead it's like it's like in the top like it's like very good trapper players um they're going to to like the way good trapper players play they will take the time to set up they'll just set up but they know they're gonna lose maybe three gens three or two gens but you, you kind of just have to give it up to get the like area you want to set up or just camp ready. And you could relate that to just like killers in general, like or like comp players. You want to just have a kill, because four survivors at all times is is really really bad. There there's way too much that can be done with just four people, but with three, survivors are very limited. It's also much harder to get the save because, well, if there's three people and you get a hook, um, one person usually alone will not get the save. You will try, to, like, they don't want to, like, play that mind game of getting grabbed. While the other person is doing what? Just a gen? One person on gen's not that bad. And if you do get the grab, well, you just won the game. Yeah, that's so why, the, the idea that's is... That's they camp or tunnel the first person off the hook immediately in a game. Is always like that in the comps? Always, yeah. I unfortunately did it too. I played Trickster. Um, I camped Basement on Wrecker's Yard. He, I gave up gens though, but I, I was running Deadlock. Because that's allowed on Trickster. I camped Trickster. I mean, they won't be able to get a save. No one's going to be able to get a save against a Trickster in Basement. Without, without penalty. So let's say... So I lost... So like I lost three gens though. I, I lost three gens because it was like okay we're not gonna be able to get that person. Uh, but I had deadlock so I did lose gens. But I also had no way out though. And the whole so, point was just to kill somebody as quickly as possible. Yeah. So there's and then there's when you kill someone as quickly as possible you have the freedom to do more chases and in in this case when you're speaking in comp terms more hooks means more points uh, yeah but by that time chances. by the time you kill someone they're down to like the last gen or two basically the last gen or two is it only goes so far when uh i mean the thing is like survivors in at least comp when you say that they typically don't just want to pop the gens right away because they might feel you have no ed or um they want to save the survivor to get as many points as possible on their points you know what I mean? So, like, in this case, if I have Bubba, right, and I got Corrupt, Deadlock, No Way Out, and No Ed, do I really need something like Bamboozle? Because if now, my are you plan... Are in, like, comp terms in Bubba or just, like, public game? My, I, I'm just talking about, like, trying to basically camp, tunnel, get someone killed for 4K, like, hardcore. Right. So, just public game. Cause, cause in comp, no way out, no, it is, is like banned. Oh, it is. When paired, with, when paired together, because it's kind of overpowered. I mean, yeah, I mean the build you have is actually pretty solid, but in this case, if you do want to change something, the perk that I would change would probably be deadlock, just for some regression. What would it be too? Um, call of Brian. Cause 
Because if this is, uh, I'm thinking in terms of this is a, a, a face camping build, right? Deadlock is just going to guarantee an extra two minutes. Whereas mm -hmm. Call of Brian might not really give me that much value. I mean, Call of Brian is one of the best perks. But if I just go pick a Jan and then I'm just going to face camp someone. I know, I know. <laughs> that. It, it can be like that. That's it's like I said. You're it's harder to get value out of perks than people may seem. Like you just put it on. It's like hey. I'm thinking in this case, downing somebody and just face camping them, and like deadlock's gonna give me the extra two minutes. No way out. Well, as a way out's not gonna give me all that much unless I hook four people. I mean, sometimes the end game. No, no, no. Even even two or three hooks is very good. Because let's say let's say um, you get you get a hook on a survivor that's stage two, but they're halfway to the they're yeah they're halfway to death hook. Even though I have the um, even though I have two uh, two stacks on um, no way out. Well, the survivor is already going to be dead, and I know that the other survivors can't leave yet. So that's going to kind of confirm a kill or force them to come over and try to save them. All while I still have time because I know they can't open the exit yet. That's another scenario where you don't need three or four um, hooks with no way out to get value out of it. You'll always get value out of no way out. Always. It's, it's one of my favorite perks. It, it and it also just comes down to preferences and just play style in general. Obviously, this is like kind of just talking about if you want to just sweat win every single game. Not well, necessarily if you care losing. Well, with my MMR on nurse, I feel like that's kind of weird. Actually, I go I go between like two extremes i go between like potato noobs that just dc and kill themselves on hook because they don't even want to play against a nurse to like really sweaty swifts that are like bullying me with flashlights and they're just cranking out gens really fast and body blocking sabotaging hooks blinding pallet stuns like they're just going all out hardcore and i go between like <laughs> one match to the next and so I go into one thinking like, oh, this is going to be a sweat fest, but then it's just a bunch of noobs that I feel bad for. And I want to just let them out the gate because they run in a straight line where so, then I, I play the next game and I can't I even like catch someone. That, uh, she, she plays casually because like it's, it's my autistic friend. Um, she likes running full, she likes running aura perks in Iron Maiden. I, she she'll never run gen regression. With she what just killer? Likes finding people, uh, trickster. She's the trickster simp. And it's just in killers in general. She just runs aura bricks because she likes to, even though she knows gems are gonna go by instantly. She really just plays for chases. It's like, hey, if you escape, that's fine. Which like I'm not even gonna like like sometimes in a way I just. I don't even want to like necessarily win every game because I just want to play for chases. So yeah, that's like that's why like in a way I'm like that pretty much all the time because I run Shadowborn on literally every killer. <laughs> it handicaps me, but. Like, I just like the extra field of view, and sometimes playing on, like, default view gives me a headache for killer. Oh, Shadowborn, I've only tried it a few times, and it just feels weird to me. I think I tried it on Nurse, and it just felt, it made the blinking feel really weird. You get used to, yeah, at, at first, yeah, that's, it's weird how it works, because you use Shadowborn, you don't like it. But when you use Shadowborn enough, you realize, wait, I love this perk. And you don't and want to go take back. Take it off, and then yeah, <laughs> I'm. It's a drug addiction. And I fell for it. Memes would they also make up reasons to ban you like they do from H4X? Absolutely. 
They're scumbags, that clan. 